Thanks very much. Um, I want to thank Pippa and Philip, first of all, to in, uh, thank you for inviting me to this conference and um, having me uh, being part of the Cruz family. Although I haven't visited yet, I know it's been planned, but uh, circumstances have you know, spoiled it in some, some ways. But um, today I wanted to talk about the death um, sort of uh, of alphabets at the end of the late Bronze Age. And this question is much um, sort of came forth from what happened to the Drala alphabet at the end of the late Bronze Age. So we're going to the late Bronze Age Levant. And also um, uh, inspired by some of the ideas that Philip has recently been writing about in, in association with the Ugaritic alphabet. Um, so it's very much an ongoing sort of process. I haven't fully crystallized my thoughts, but I'm gonna share them today. And I hope you can give me some, some, some insights and some feedback on them. So first of all, I, 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 I wanna stress that the social const to understand what happened to the alphabets during the late bronze age and what happened at the end of the late bronze age is very important to know the social context of writing. And I wanna stress that the cultic context might've been crucial uh, for alphabetic writing in especially the Southern Levant um, throughout the bronze age. And something might've changed uh, in the iron age, but definitely for the bronze age, it might've been one of the prime venues. So I would also argue that alphabets used, uh, are used in different social contexts from hieratic and Akkadian writing practices that are much more associated with state-sponsored writing. Um, then that features into the argument of temples as venues for alphabetic writing, uh, which I call cultic curating. So this doesn't suggest that only temples were the venues where alphabets were used, but they might've been one of the prime venues um, uh, where alphabetic writing uh, played a part in, in cultural negotiations uh, between local populations and also between local populations, um, rulers and uh, colonial powers. Um, so temples as intermediaries, intermediaries in colonial uh, imperial encounters and uh, Ido Koch has recently written a, a lot about this in relation to the um, Lachish temple, for instance. So uh, alphabetic scripts are then marks of local identity and resistance. And this is very much inspired by Boy's idea about the Ugaritic or the cuneiform alphabet developed at Ugarit. So alphabets played a role in, in stressing local identities. And I think um, especially this, this role uh, made it have a certain uh, social uh, play out in a certain social context and also influenced um, some of its developments and what we could call uh, deaths between brackets. Um, so a Darala and a cuneiform alphabet uh, at Ugarit remains fragile writing systems, uh, which made them um, susceptible to, uh, to disappearing at the end of the late Bronze Age. Um, uh, and perhaps some of the temples were targets of social unrest during the late Bronze Age. I will get back to this at the end uh, when talking about the so-called late Bronze Age collapse. Um, and then, of course, we know that there's a, a linear alphabetic tradition. We know from, from the Shefala area, from Lachish, from the south, which seem to have escaped this sort of uh, fate that these other alphabetic forms uh, underwent. And the question is why, why this particular alphabet managed to sort of escape and, and develop into, into uh, alphabetic writing practices in the, in, the, in the Iron Age. So these are some of the ideas I hope to be um, talking about. Um, so alphabetic uh, writing as a cultic act, um, I think comes forth from looking at the archeological evidence as well. And I think, it was quite evident from the start, from the from the from the from finding the first sort of early alphabetic inscriptions, Middle Bronze Age uh, inscriptions at Sirevit al Hadim, and even the first translation of of one of these alphabetic texts, uh, which was a dedication to um, al, al Baalat to, to the Lady uh, Baal. Um, you can see on this thing. So um, already, I think from its incipient, uh, the alphabet had a particular role in cultural negotiations, which might have played out in um, cultic contexts. And um, although alphabets, of course, even early alphabets might have been found outside of direct what we perceive as cultic contexts, such as temples at Sirevit al Hadim, such as mines, or even at Al Wadi al Hol, uh, the early alphabetic inscription in Egypt, I think still there. Um, such um, venues could have played an important role. And in fact, Darnell stresses for the Wadi Hall as well, that um, this place was used for uh, social gatherings uh, to celebrate um, Hathor as a deity. So I think even there, although it's not as evident, uh, it might've been a, uh, um, an important component. Now, this brings me to um, a current, a recurring idea or, or a current idea is that alphabets were used just as much as Hieratic was or Akkadian um, in, the, in the Yamana period to, to fulfill this bureaucratic need 
of, of, um, of writing. So I, here's a citation by Millard, a uh, picture Canaanite scribe in mercantile centers trained to write Egyptian with ink and paper, aware of cuneiform and maybe other scripts. Uh, none of them really his native language. All are quite in, in, uh, complicated to write. So the, the, the idea that uh, alphabetic writing was directly inspired by these bureaucratic, uh, as you say, mercantile uh, center, this bureaucratic um, need of writing. And I think it, it should be switched to an, another sort of social venue. So I will come back to this quote at the end and maybe hope to have convinced you that, that we should look at this in a, in a slightly different way, at least for the late Bronze Age. Um, then the role of temples in the late Bronze Age is becoming, or has been evident, but is becoming also evident because of new archaeological research. Um, so Koch, for instance, has very much showed the, the role, of the changing role of the Fossa temple at Lachish in negotiating imperial encounters with, with the Egyptians, with refor reforming the temple throughout its late Bronze existence. And Greenberg in a recent book has also stressed that the, um, from the transition to the middle, from the transition of the Middle Bronze Age to the Late Bronze Age, building temples was a very fundamental um, part, or at least let's say cultic structures was a very fundamental part of, of Bronze Age activity. And he makes the important distinction between sort of informal uh, temples and more formal temples that, and the formal temples would then continue from, from um, important places such as uh, Pella and Shechem, um, uh, where, where Middle Bronze Age temples clearly so, show continuation, but there's also a lot of informal temples which are raised in new areas where no um, cultic area had been before. Uh, um, and I think maybe these informal, uh, more informal temples outside of direct uh, um, elite, uh, sort of uh, outside of the direct association with elite uh, power, uh, might have been even more important for uh, the development of the alphabet. I will get back to this in a minute. Um, so during the late Bronze Age, I apologize for this. Um, it, it's perhaps not the most clear, I made it a while ago and I'll, I'll, I'll hope, I hope to improve it in a way, but I hope it shows sort of the hot, hot bunch of, you know, the mixing of, of uh, alphabetic sc or F, um, scripts uh, in the late Bronze Age, Southern Levant, uh, linear alphabetic, Cuneiform alphabetic, uh, cuneiform documents uh, in, associated with Imarna uh, or Imarna letters, and you know cuneiform um, uh, non-alphabetic scripts, and then hieratic, of course, as well. So on first on first side, it would argue that all these scripts uh, um, occurred uh, on well in the same area and, and even on the same site. But as this uh, next um, slide might perhaps show, this is a slide showing. Um, in, in yellow uh, rectangles, it shows alphabet, linear alphabetic scripts. The stars uh, are hieratic or attestations of hieratic writing. And then the red dots are actually what we know as uh, Egyptian garrisons uh, from the late Bronze Age um, to onwards. So th these are the strongholds of the Egyptian uh, power. So although alphabets very much, I, I would argue, uh, developed in the shadow of empires, they might not have been always directly in contact with this imperial power. And I, th I think this is an important distinction to make. And already on this map, for instance, it's uh, important to, to note that Der Allah, where we're going to go have a look at in a minute, is actually, I mean, the, the nearest garrison is, is at Beit Shan. And Beit Shan, interestingly, has, uh, has shown no uh, late Bronze Age alphabetic inscriptions, or at least so far. Uh, the same for Lachish, which was very close to, um, to Egyptian imperial power uh, at, with garrisons such as Tel El Hazy and Geza and then Gaza as the foremost. But uh, Lachish itself did not have this garrison. This does not mean, of course, that Egyptians weren't there and Egyptian writing practices weren't practiced there, as I will get back to, especially for Lachish. But that um, alphabetic writing might have, uh, might have been practiced in, in a different social context and actually even been sort of scripts of, of resistance. And we'll get back to this. Um, and it's also sort of the idea that a boy is developed for, um, Philip developed for um, the cuneiform alphabet at Ugarit. Right, so let's go to, um, let's go to Derala then. Um, this, as you can see, is Tel Derala. It's a, it's, a, it's a sizable tile, seven acres large in the middle Jordan Valley. It's on very important communication routes uh, uh, running north, south through the Jordan Valley, but also routes into the Jordanian highlands and into the, um, the Western Highlands uh, to, to where Shechem is, for instance. So uh, quite an important uh, location uh, um, on the trade routes that were uh, used for interregional communication uh, exchange and also used um, and were also important for the Egyptians when they came to um, present this colonial power in the region. Um, <clears throat> so the first tablets, um, 
were found in 1964. And here's a picture of Hank Franken studying one of the first uh, tablets that was found in a temple context. Uh, you can see to the, to the right there. Um, <clears throat> so since, since a long time, these, of these, these tablets have been known to exist, although they've been, they've been quite enigmatic so far and they actually remain quite enigmatic um, um, to, to the present day, really. Um, <clears throat> here are some uh, in situ uh, photographs of these alphabets being found uh, in various locations. And this is important to, to note that the, the tablets are very much uh, found in situ in a late bronze, the, the final late bronze, so late bronze three context, 12th century, in destroyed um, in, in, in layers that are destroyed by fire. But they have a very clear um, chronological, chronological and stratigraphic context, which makes them even more valuable. And uh, a sizable amount of them have been found. 15 tablets have been so far found, uh, seven of which bear inscriptions, uh, and the others bear uh, patterns of, of dots, which are uh, is sort of a not yet unexplained, not yet explained uh, phenomenon. And if, anyway, some very important paleographic um, studies have been done by Gerrit van der Kooi, who looked at the writing direction of these um, of these tablets and the writing practices. So the direction of the um, the impl implement that was used, um, uh, although yet unidentified, and um, the way um, the signs overlap. So he has he has established the writing direction and the way the tablets were held actually when when written upon. The writing direction is from um, from left to right, and. Um, and, uh, but it's been a very important contribution to understanding these, these tablets. So um, recently I, I published a paper uh, suge suggesting some uh, sign identifications for at least 22 of these signs and trying to, uh, with that, uh, trying to uh, read the tablets. So the suggestion is that it's, um, it's a Northwest Semitic language is written. It's definitely an alphabetic script with up to 27 um, signs uh, and it might have been using sort of pseudo vowels as well much as in a line as as uh, ugaritic did so it shows some very important interesting possibly interesting similarities to the development of um, cuneiform alphabetic uh, i won't go too much uh, into the actual meaning of the terms because it's very enigmatic still so in a way i tried my best with with, with the knowledge at hand but i think um, to take this really further uh, we need specialists to look at it in much more detail and also it, it wouldn't be bad to find some more tablets to have a, a wider corpus to work with uh, because on a basis of seven tablets it's still very much uh, tricky but I argue that at least what <clears throat> if if some of this interpretation is true then what is important is that these tablets don't don't suggest uh, bureaucratic practice of counting goods but are much more uh, to be seen in the realm of prophecies and in the realm of even you know oral uh, traditions of uh, that, that are very much uh, we know have been present in Canaanite society and also inherited into the Iron Age so I would I would move the the relevance of these tablets very much away from bureaucratic practices and much more into the realm of um, um, the significance of, of writing itself and in, into in, 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 in a cultic context. This brings me to the um, actual archaeological context of these tablets at Allah, And they've been found in uh, three prime locations, actually two of them which are quite crucial. So the, the, most of the tablets were found in the temple area in the north of the site. You can see, um, um, uh, which, which is marked A. So you see the, the cell of the temple, but then there's some small buildings to the site and a lot of the uh, tablets were found there actually. And interestingly enough, some of the tablets that have been found were sort of crushed clay tablets. So we, the, the assumption is there that writing practices also took place in, the, in that location. Although ideally we would get some more information on that as well. Then a second important uh, location is this um, pillared uh, monumental building, um, um, which in the area, it, which is marked C. So in, in a sense, it's a monumental public building. Probably we don't know exactly what the function was, but ex when you look at the, um, the design of the building and, and compare it to what is known to be the temple, then in, in effect, it's not that different a building from, from what the temple is. This doesn't imply that it's necessary a temple, but it argues that um, these um, tablets and the script was very much an important part of um, these um, public buildings serving sort of um, public good. Um, and then an, another tablet is found in the south, and it's a singular um, uh, tablet found in an area which is which is considered to be industrial. But um, I think an important argument here I would like to make as well is that um, although 
tablets might not be always found in, in, in what we identify primarily as a cultic uh, context, their significance in, in such a sense, or the significance of writing might have had other connotations than just being able to write something down. Um, <clears throat> this takes me to Lagish as a second uh, case study for alphabetic writing. So Lagish, uh, here you see the Lagish is, is a quite sizable tell in, in a Shafel area in the on the southern coast of, of uh, present, uh, present day Israel. And um, what's important as well here is that uh, Lach is attached to a couple of temples as well. The Northeastern Temple has been recently discovered. The Fossa Temple has been known for quite some while. And then there's the Acropolis Temple on, on, the, on the highest part of the temple. And then there's another public building, which I will come back to, very much like the Darala building in a way, in, in the area S. Now, six alphabetic inscriptions have been found uh, um, dating to the late Bronze Age, or dating to the Bronze Age, one dating to the Middle Bronze Age, probably, at, at Lachish. Um, the most famous one, perhaps Lagish Ur, which is found in association with the Fossa Temple, and it's a dedication to the goddess Elat, and uh, plays an important role in, in Koch's um, um, identification of the changing role of the temple as well uh, throughout time, which he argues became dedicated to Hathor in association with, uh, with the Egyptian court. Um, now, another um, alphabetic inscription was actually found on a bowl in one of the pits that's marked here 3852, so in, in association with this public pillar building. And in, in, terms, of, um, in terms of its design and, and, and in terms of its architect architectural features, I would argue that this building is not that different from, from what we see at Dar Allah. And although we know, well, the interpretation is, in, is a public building, whether it's cultic or not, we don't know, but it, its context is not that different from uh, what we see at, um, for instance, the Foster Temple and also at uh, the Allah. Um, and then the latest found alphabetic inscription uh, has been published recently by Felix Hoffelmeyer and, and colleagues. It's been found in recent uh, um, excavations, which is fascinating, of course, because on the one hand, it's been very well dated to the late 15th century, which shows that alphabetic writing was definitely around uh, before sort of the imperial presence of, of, of Egypt became very marked in the late Bronze Age too, and argues against the um, sort of causal role of, of this imperial empire. And also it, what's interesting is it's found in the same area as the previous, previously shown pillared building and in quite close to another um, monumental building, building uh, 100, though it's found against a wall. So it's not directly associated with the building. It might have, it might show that there's a similar um, connection with write, writing here. Um, and before I go to Ugarit, um, I want to basically quickly go back to this slide and, and suggest that, so alphabetic writing has been associated with the Fossa Temple um, and then also with these public buildings in area S and with the Northeastern Temple as well, as recently found. But interestingly enough, you know, the Acropolis Temple, which is in, interpreted as very much the, um, the temple of the, of, the, of the ruling elite of Lagish uh, and strongly associated with uh, Egyptian uh, imperial um, power as well, although no garrison was present, the, the uh, ruling elite was very much associated with this imperial power. Um, no alphabetic inscriptions have been found here so far, but interestingly enough, a deposit of um, bowls with hieratic script um, uh, with, with um, um, sort of um, um, relating to texts um, um, to, to, to text have been found there. So I would argue that this might be sort of um, an important distinction here where, where hieratic uh, writing practice might have been more associated with with the direct um, elite control and that alphabetic practices were very much sort of um, a practice associated with more with with these um, smaller temples on the fringe of the settlement. Okay, excuse me. Ugarit, yes. Ugarit, I won't go into much detail about Ugarit, of course, because Philip has written a lot about this and, and uh, he's done a great job and uh, we can just write his, his work on it. But what, what's important is that for Ugarit, Philip um, su suggests strongly that the development of alphabetic writing here as well was very much um, a, a social act, an intentional social act and associated with identity formation as well and in the face of um, Hittite rule. Um, and that uh, alphabetic writing became then associated with, um, with various um, um, social contexts within uh, Ugarit itself, so not just cultic. So in a sense, Ugarit might have been, in my mind, shouldn't be taken as the example of what alphabetic writing 
entailed in Sauron as well. But Ugarit is more an exception where alphabetic writing actually got incorporated into um, a broader social network. Though importantly um, to, to say is that it did stay very much contained to Ugarit and a few sites outside. And this um, is important in comparison with the Dralata alphabet as well, which only is found on one side. So in some ways, these scripts were still uh, fragile writing systems and they were socially um, cu curated, at least on, on a site uh, scale. So this brings me to the, the final part of, um, of, the, of the argument of, of how, how these different social positions of alphabetic writing might have played out at the end of the late Bronze Age. Uh, in what we, in what is sometimes called, you know, this late Bronze Age collapse, um, famously described in in Eric Klein's book, um, um, <clears throat> where he sort of sees it as a butterfly effect of all kinds of events taking place. There's there's, there's drought, there's earthquakes, um, there's of course the sea people mentioned, but very important um, and and stressed by recent scholars as well, such as Philip Ford Ugrit and also by Kramerman, for instance, is that not all. <clears throat> Um, destruction, which is widely tested, um, should be attributed to a single cause. But um, it seems that it's very much uh, a, a longer, long-term breakdown that already started early in the late Bronze Age of, of the social fabric of what what was the late Bronze Age system uh, in 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 what some would have would call actually sort of a glo uh, global a globalization kind of ideal of, of globali globalized exchange. Um, uh, as Liverani stressed, and also Greenberg and, uh, and Philip Boys recently stressed. So it's a, a breakdown of a social system. So then the question also becomes, what was the role of alphabetic writing? Uh, or how was it perceived? And how did this change in, in society influence um, um, the, the, the role, the perceived role of, of alphabetic writing? So um, Kreimerman, interestingly enough, um, published a study on different types of um, of destruction and abandonment in the Southern Levant. And although this, um, this map only shows sites uh, in, in present day um, Israel and, and the West Bank and Jordanian sites are not included, uh, we know of destruction uh, phase, same, uh, contemporary destruction phases in, uh, in Daral as well and Bella, for instance. So there's room here to expand, but important is what he managed to suggest is that there's nuances in destruction here. So, we all already knew there's nuances in, in the timing of destruction. Some, some sites um, or some parts of sites were show destruction phases already in the 13th century. A lot of them show destruction in the, in the 12th uh, century. But um, as this map shows, there's nuances here. So there's a complete burning of an entire city, for instance, Lachish. Um, there are signs of fire only in public buildings. And I wanted to stress here that this seems to form a cluster uh, at Telina, Megiddo, Beit Shan, so close to Dara'la and Shechem as well. Um, and Dara'la is very close to Beit Shan. So the question now is, uh, we know that Dara'la was destroyed. M many have always assumed that it was because of an earthquake. We know that it was around, um, it's one in the 12th century because um, a vase, a faience vase by uh, Queen Tauser has been found. So this has been used as a, as a date approximating the destruction, but the exact date of the destruction is not yet known. But what also could be argued is that um, this, this earth, it might not just have been an earthquake, not an earthquake at all, but all, also local elements might have been uh, important in these events. And, and this is what Kramer also suggests, um, that these signs of fire targeting public buildings might have been um, be very much because of uh, local unrest that started targeting what people saw as representing uh, the status quo of the late Bronze Age. So in some, in some form, uh, shape or form, you could call it sort of a re revolutionary tendencies against um, a, a, glo a globalizing system, which in, in a way I think has some eerie reflections in, in what's taking uh, place uh, these days. So I think it's, this is a continuous uh, process actually. And, and this might be, uh, um, in, these nuances might be important uh, when looking at what happened to alphabetic scripts. So, um, and then there's uh, sites with signs of fire uh, by the fortifications. So maybe associated with battle and then uh, no signs of fire. Um, so this takes me back to the social position of alphabets at the end of the late Bronze Age. So, although, I mean, these are days and they're not fully formed yet, I would suggest that um, alphabets uh, might've developed as, as expressions of so social identity very much. Uh, these, these three alphabets alike, so linear alphabetic, uh, as we know it from, for instance, Lachish, 
the Derala script as well, and then Ugaritic uh, cuneiform alphabetic as well, were very much alphabets of resistance in, in first instance, uh, very much associated with uh, what became uh, colonial uh, uh, sort of imperial power in, in the form of Hittite uh, to, uh, in relation to Ugarit, as Philip suggests, but also the Egyptians in, in the Southern Levant. But at the end of the Late Bronze Age, um, the, the social position of these alphabets might have, might have been seen in a different way. Um, so, uh, whereas they, they formed as alphabets of resistance and a local expression of local identity, they might have become um, alphabets associated with compliance, basically, um, a compliance, a colonial compliance or compliance with, with the system that was. So, we, we can imagine that if a certain part of the population was left out of, of, of the benefits of what, what the late Bronze Age system represented, they might have been very much uh, reacting against public buildings, but also against certain uh, writing practices. Um, and this might be an explanation, or at least Philip Boyce has suggested that in the case of uh, cuneiform alphabetic, this might be one of the uh, explanations of why suddenly, or rather, we don't know how sudden, but why at the end of the late Bronze Age, Ugaritic alphabetic um, was no longer a script uh, that was seen as useful to continue. Uh, and for the Rala, it, which ends exactly at the same time, a similar argument might, might be made. Although the extent of literacy at, at Darala is not yet known, uh, and it might also be that if, if, if it was a very contained group of people writing, which I would suggest uh, writing, alphabetic writing was very widespread in society anyway, up to the, up to the Iron Age, um, then a small group, of course, knowing how to use this alphabetic script would have been in any kind of uh, trouble um, when, when it came to site destruction. But then the exception to this rule uh, is the linear alphabetic uh, writing that we know of from, from Lachish and its surroundings, and we know from several other sites and which developed into the Iron Age uh, alphabetic writing script. So I would suggest that here, um, these alphabets were actually not directly associated with um, with the parties that were held responsible in some ways for, for, for the troubles at the end of the late Bronze Age, but actually were uh, embraced anew to start reflecting new uh, social identities forming in the Iron Age, um, um, and both in, in a cultic sense, both in a religious sense, but also in a sense of regional identities. So this takes me then back to um, this quote I, I, I showed before, um, by Miller, by Alan Millard um, about the Canaan scribe. And I would suggest that the lower, um, well, I would, I would suggest that the lower picture is perhaps a bit more of an accurate picture of, of, of alphabetic writing practices in the, in the Southern Levant, at least. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention.